All right, Cesar. Welcome back. You like how I did it right? As you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh man, why are you starting now as I'm drinking? <laughs> you shouldn't have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a free space to drink, to whatever. There's no etiquette. <laughs> Welcome Sounds back good. to House Church. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me here. I'm Absolutely. Happy, happy to be here with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to have you here. Um, we got to hang out this week a little bit. Um, and that's the beauty about this is mm -hmm. preparation for this looks like taking a walk mm -hmm. and chatting about, you know, what God is speaking to you. And we're jumping into part three of Comfort Detox. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so we've, we launched this series a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, because we felt like it was the most natural transition coming out of profiling Jesus. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time really diving into specific aspects of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then felt like when you get to know Jesus, when it's not just head knowledge, but mm -hmm. you actually experience Jesus, there's almost this sense of he calls you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And so we launched this series, Hope in Myself, and the first week really chatted about whether it's worth it to step outside your comfort zone. We looked at the example of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then in part two, Henry and uh, Dylan unpacked some of the definitions of... Uh, comfort of unhealthy mm -hmm. comfort and mm -hmm. unhealthy discomfort and in part three today you and i are tackling i think what is probably one of the most important aspects to focus on and discuss when talking mm -hmm. about stepping outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. so that's a recap for us for all of us yes and you are one of the most brilliant minds I know. I think even just <laughs> going back to our conversation this last week, I left and I was like, man, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. I think you have some incredible things to share. Um, you have been part of New City for a while. How did you guys get involved with New City? It was uh, because Anna knew uh, Johanna mm -hmm. from school, I believe. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. many years ago, mm -hmm. uh, growing up here in Southern Manitoba, or as teenagers, I guess. Right. And then uh, Johanna invited Anna to my wife okay. to attend New City. Yeah. And that's how we started. I, th I think it took some time from the first time she invited Anna to when we actually started going. Sure. But that's how we knew about New City. That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most beautiful and epic way I've ever heard Joanna's name said. I think, I think that's how everybody should say it. Joanna. Like, how do you say it? Johanna? Yeah, that is super cool. That is cool. I don't know if that's the right way. I wonder... Uh, it should be what, right what is she going to think? No, I think she's going to want that instead of the way she normally says it. <laughs> that's cool. We're glad to have you a part of New City. Um, if we reflect a little bit on last week, we had these handouts, these pieces of paper that really highlighted for us um, or helped us understand what healthy comfort looks like and what healthy um, discomfort looks like. And then the opposite of that as well. After you've had a chance to look at this and sit with this a little bit, what stands out to you from this? Well, the first thing I, I see here is, is a map. Mm. Uh, to me, this is, this is like, a, like a map to try to find where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting the colors you use is the red zone and the green zone. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make it clear. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to be here. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. you, you kind of know where you want to be. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I think we're all, uh, all of us are sometimes on one side and sometimes in the other. I don't think this is, uh, this is uh, a fixed place that you that you find or where you are and, and you're stuck, you're stuck in there, right? I, mm -hmm. I think there's, uh, we move around this zone. Yeah. 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 I think I was telling you to you that it, it's almost like the personality, uh, the personality test, right? Like yeah. 
Where, where does your dot fall, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's worth unpacking the words that come to mind for us because these are just a guide. Mm-hmm. Like it's just meant to help create conversation, get our minds thinking. Yeah. But I think you have a really good point that there's many words that don't fall into this. Um, but perhaps it's worth sitting with this and going, okay, where does this fall? Mm-hmm. And, and where am I right now? I think is an important question. Mm-hmm. And then where do I want to be? Mm-hmm. Right. And, yep. and that's a different question from where should I be? Yes. Where do I want to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if 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 the world that describes how you're feeling right now is not it's not here. Yeah, you, you can um, sit and think about it, like where would it fall and yeah. maybe try to find another word for it. Right. Mm. I think uh, I think like we're, we're definitely not limited to one word right yeah. we're not uh we cannot be described with one word so yeah so mul- multiple uh multiple feelings going on but yeah i think it requires some thinking right right to actually become a little introspective reflection and being introspective is something that's of high value to you yeah what, why and what's been your experience with that why is that of such high value to you you know it's it's so easy to uh walk our lives um, with distractions or, mm-hmm. or, or letting us be distracted by, by the things that surround us, right? Mm-hmm. But um, normally, we don't tend to look inside of us. Mm. Uh, I mean, now with technology, distractions are even greater, yeah. right? All these things trying to stimulate us, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Movies get more crazy every time and, yeah. and so on, right? Yeah. So sitting down and finding that time to look inside of you because mm-hmm. we're saying okay so i feel sad mm-hmm. or i feel uh distressed or something mm-hmm. and probably our first reaction is like okay i'm gonna go eat something <laughs> or Comfort eating. Yeah, yeah yeah or i feel sad i should watch a show a tv mm-hmm. show right and when i have practiced this about sitting down and, and thinking about what's going on in my mind i uh, I guess when when you are done through it, whatever, how, what, uh, however much time uh, you take, like uh, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. When I'm done, I, I feel uh, happier. Mm. Um, you know, if I was sad, I I am able to find out why I was sad mm. because sometimes it's, it's easy, we hide it ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, you have to be honest with yourself when you are sitting alone. Yeah. Because you see in scripture how Jesus would separate himself from the crowds, it said. Mm-hmm. And you see in scripture moments where he went and just and just prayed and was alone with God. Mm-hmm. And that was something that was important to him. Yeah. And I do think if we're following Jesus' example, then that's something that needs to become a part of our lives. And I say that with a sense of like, in my life, I know I need to do better in that. Yeah, just, just taking the time for, to get to know yourself. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's give people a chance to practice some reflection and to think through this. Um, where are you right now? And maybe you're in a few different places. Like maybe in your marriage, you feel like you're in, in healthy comfort. And maybe in the workplace, you feel like you're in unhealthy comfort, right? There's different aspects of life. Mm-hmm. Where are you right now? And then if, if, if you have time, discuss the question, where would you like to be? Mm-hmm. Where do you want to be? Um, And then we'll come back and dive a little more into the idea of identity. But let's get our house churches to discuss that for now.
Yeah, I think if people can take the time to try again at home, yeah. that would be fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah. We were hoping that people would do it now to get a feel for it. Right. Uh, and what it means, what it could mean, but right. I think everyone needs to try it. All of us need to try it again yeah. at home yeah. when we find a, a, a moment of peace. Right. Yeah. Why is this important? Why is it important to reflect? Like, why is that an important thing when it comes to identity? Yeah, that's, I think that, <laughs> that, that's the main question, right? Or yeah. One of the main questions. Why, why is this important? Because uh, I think the word we um, used before, it's, uh, it was purpose, mm. right? Mm -hmm. When you take the time to, to think about, okay, how do I feel, where, I'm, where, I, where am I at, where I want to be, you're starting to know yourself. Mm. That's, that's a first step, right? Yeah. As opposed to being distracted by other things, you are facing yourself. Ooh, that's a good way of putting it, facing yourself. Yeah, you're facing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're standing in front of yourself. Yeah. Um, and we tend to avoid that. So mm -hmm. it's important to take time to, to try to do this exercise because I, I think it's... I think it's a, a simple way, I'm sure not the only one, but it's probably a simple way to start to reflect on, uh, on who you are and start to get to know yourself. Right, right. Uh, and why is it important to, uh, you know, start to get to know yourself? Yeah. Because it starts to give you a better purpose in life. Mm. I think at some point we all wonder, yeah. Like, why are we here? Why was I born? Yeah. What is my mission yeah. in life? Yeah. What does God want from me? Yeah. But if you don't know yourself, yeah. if you're lost, yeah. if you don't have a map, yeah. will, will it be hard to get there? Yeah. 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 What would you say, you know, if I asked you the question, Cesar, who are you? So as you get to know yourself, and as you're finding purpose, what are some of the things that you think help you to understand who you are and, and help you find your identity? Like, who are you? Yeah, uh, great question. The more I think about it, I, I believe that I'm simply part of God's creation. Mm. Uh, that's who I am. When you just look around yourself, um, yeah. you know, see the blue sky, yeah. The green trees, the fields, yeah. water, the thunders, everything, yeah. um, animals. Mm -hmm. um, you realize that we are really interconnected yeah. um, to all of that. God's, God's creation, God's nature. Wow. And again, if, if we spend our lives uh, surrounded by distractions yeah. and technology, uh, and we don't connect mm. with the rest of God's creation. We, wow. we don't see it. Wow. And, and, and I think we live a little bit of an empty life. Wow. Um, superficial, I guess, someone yeah. would call it, right? We're all seeking to be loved yeah. and love. Yeah. And, and we're all seeking peace. Mm -hmm. And I find that peace in God. Yeah. So who am I? So so recognizing first that I'm a that I'm a a son of God, that ah, I'm part of His creation, wow. gives you a a position in in this world. Wow! Right, and then and then you realize that you you are connected to everyone else, not only nature but other humans. So yeah. other humans are as important as us, yeah. right? So yeah. I guess we have to remember that when we talk about identity mm -hmm. and who we are, it's not just about ourselves. Yeah. It's who we are also in relationship to everyone else. Yes. And, and because I believe in that interconnectedness of, of, of things, we all come from the same divine um, creator. Creator. Yeah, yeah. So we all have that beautiful thing in, in common. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool because growing up in the church, I've uh, mm -hmm. been in the church my entire life, um, I feel like sometimes the things I say, it's something I'm trying to unlearn and undo. Mm -hmm. 
Um, sometimes the things I say feel like pre-programmed mm-hmm. lines. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like yes. it's stuff that I've heard over and over again in church. And it's maybe you could call them cliche lines. Yes. And sometimes I feel like when I'm not actually actively processing a question or a thought, then I just spew out what's already pre-programmed. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like if someone were to ask me, you know, who are you? I feel like the correct answer or the pre-programmed answer is I am a child of God, mm-hmm. which is true. But what I like about your response is you actually are, are taking the question and going a little deeper with it to go, I am a part of God's creation. Yeah. Like I, I belong to something so much bigger than myself. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes where I struggle is trying to find my identity um, and trying to, you know, find it not just by myself, but even in how I relate to others, but to decipher then a healthy balance of not allowing others to define my identity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't want other people to define it for me. I want God to define my identity. Yes. But at the same time, I need other people and I need to be in a relationship with others to yeah. discover the identity that God has given me. Yeah. That balance sometimes can feel a little tricky. Yeah, I see what you say. I think that what people think of ourselves yeah. could be biased. Yeah. So, so yes, mm. yes, we do need other people um, to live. But if, if we all do our part... Yeah. In, in living a, um, a righteous life, yeah. um, in living a Christian life, a, a life of, of love, yeah. a life of uh, truth. Yeah. Um, if we are just honest yeah. to ourselves and others, mm-hmm. then, then I think that interaction and that influence of one another from one to others, right, it becomes more genuine. Yes, right. Yeah, we need the the core. Yes. from everyone, not not the not the modi version, not the outer version, yeah. right? We yeah. want to establish connection with the core of other yeah. people. Yeah. And so you actually need a truth that doesn't waver. You need some kind of truth at the core that doesn't shift or move. Yeah, and only God can provide that truth. That, that so. we're discovering in relationship with others. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. Like if if anyone knows us, it's God. Yeah. God knows us better than we know ourselves. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. He created us. Yeah. That pure being yeah. inside of us. Yeah. And then as we grow, and right. depending on which era we live, yeah. Um, and what shoes we wear, yeah. <laughs> right? Like that, that vision of ourselves or, or vision of others, right. you know, it starts to, um, it's like we're adding uh, um, overlays or adding uh, sc- right. filters. Yes. Uh, and then we start to see things differently. Right. Um, towards the inside yeah. and towards the outside. Yeah. Right. So what we want is to remove those filters. Yeah. And I guess going back to, to this map yeah. is, uh, you know, finding um, where you are right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a way of, of uh, removing those filters. Right. Or another way that I like to think of it is, you know, when uh, someone's building a sculpture and mm-hmm. they start off with just, you know, a big block mm-hmm. and they start, you know, chipping away yes. to eventually form the sculpture Mm-hmm. that they have in mind. Mm-hmm. I feel like when it comes to identity, because we're created in the image of God, mm-hmm. and our identity is something that God has given to us. Mm-hmm. Like He placed it inside of us. Like there's a truth yeah. of who we are that we discover um, from God through others. Yeah. Yeah, right? Through relationship with God, yeah. but also through each other, we discover that truth. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's the process of kind of chipping away to discover, all right, what's the structure yes. that yeah. is being formed and revealed? Like it's both, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you just brought 
brought something very important is okay. the fact that um, we were talking about, you know, our, our identity, our essence is there. It was yeah. given by God. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's static. Yeah. Right? It, yes. does, it, it doesn't mean that it's given and it yes. won't change. Ah, okay. Uh, it, is, it is this uh, sculpture yeah. that it forms over life. Ah. Over our lives, right? Yeah. So God has God has placed the, the seed, the essence. Yeah. But we're still sculpting sculpting every day yes how that how that identity is going to form yeah right yeah so when you learn about jesus yeah your faith grows you start to depend on god on god and then you're you're working together right on on forming that that identity right yeah. what did what did finding jesus look like for you because i think it's important to note that Finding Jesus is actually a different journey for each person. Yes. Right? Because I think the moment we start to think, well, I found Jesus this way and everybody else uh -huh. should find Jesus this way, yeah. then I think we actually take away from, you know, how divine God is that he's willing to use anything uh -huh. to, to reveal Jesus to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you find Jesus? What comes to mind when you think about this idea of what it means to find Jesus? You know, Jesus is there always with us, yeah. I believe, right? Yeah. We just need to recognize, uh, keep our ears open and listen to him. Yeah. But he has always been there. So I think I'm still in the process of opening up my ears. Yeah. And Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and then, and then, uh, and then going deeper and deeper into finding Jesus. I would say, you know, I, I found Jesus, like, the, the first thing that comes to mind is I find Jesus in, in the love of my parents. Wow. The parents that, the love that my parents gave me. Wow. You know, like, looking looking back in retrospective. Yeah. That would be, uh, like, that was, that was Jesus. Wow. Like, next to me, next to my life. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Right, because I think... The idea that you discovered Jesus or you felt like Jesus was being revealed to you mm. through your parents yeah. is massive because I don't know if you knew, would you say you knew at the time that what's being revealed to you is Jesus or you just felt like you were being loved by your parents? No, I didn't know at the time. It was just, it was just love yeah. and, 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 and learning to love others. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I think I... I found Jesus again with my wife. Uh, uh, although everyone knows marriage is not easy. That I, heard, was, I heard it's a piece of cake. Oh, oh the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is sweet. <laughs> I heard you don't even have to try. I'm just kind of. <laughs> yeah. So I think even, even uh, the challenges of the marriage and the love that exist in a marriage mm. that that was that was jesus again i was finding wow. jesus again but it it's only when i look at it in retrospective wow. right is um you know I, w I was finding the partner of my life yeah and and that that of course changed my mind because then kids came yeah and then jesus is revealing again yeah through our kids yeah if we were to try and venture into a journey of figuring out our identity and our purpose if we're going to do that and if we're going to um, leave the world better than we found it if we're mm -hmm. going to have an impact then we're going to have to do better every single day yeah and so I feel like I could try and actually just start and you know try and be a better human being mm -hmm. and be like okay I'm just going to be a good person I'm going to love others I'm going to serve people I'm going to treat others right I can do that to a, set, a certain extent. You hit a point where you discover, I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. And that even my best efforts um, might actually fall short. Mm -hmm. And that's where Jesus comes in, is I can try and do good by myself. I can try and live out my purpose just by myself. Mm -hmm. But if I really want to learn how to do it well, I'm going to have to follow the example of Jesus. Yes. Yes. It's about keeping in mind where we want to be, right? Right. Like we discussed before. 
how can I start to follow Jesus? Yeah. I'm, I'm learning, trying to learn myself yeah. to use the Bible. Ah, <laughs> right? Okay. I guess uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, read it yeah. and, and use it. Like it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful book. It's a yeah. wonderful collection of historical facts that um, are testimony of what Jesus yeah. did, right? Yeah, you're right. So if we use that guide, yeah. I mean, if, if everyone, you yeah. know, eventually, if everyone, you know, would follow the life of Jesus, yeah. we would be in a, in a very different position, so. in a very different world. I think so, because then we would find the truth of our identity mm -hmm. in the process of discovering who Jesus is. Because mm -hmm. I think when it comes to discovering who we are, so often we can um, allow ourselves to accept the delusions sometimes that are presented to us, either by ourselves or by others. Yeah. Have you experienced that in your life where um, a delusion has become your sense of identity? Yes. Yeah? De yeah, definitely. I think uh, in my case, uh, you know, architecture, <laughs> being an architect, mm -hmm. uh, architecture is my passion. Yeah. But sometimes it defines who am I, ah. and it tries to define uh, my priorities, and it tries to, you know, rule my life. Yeah, and and that's a delusion in a way. Yeah, yeah, it's important because uh, when we're trying to understand who we are, yeah, it's it's very. Uh, we have to recognize that we have to get to the essence. So yeah. we're, we're not our bodies. Yeah. You know, the person we see in the mirror, that's, that's not really who we that's are. That's not us. That's yeah. just flesh and bones. Yeah. That's our, that's the materialization of, yeah. of us in this planet. But, you know, who we see in the camera is not really who we are, yeah. right? And then uh, we're not necessarily what other people think we are. Right, because there could be a bias there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's uh, our relationships, right? Yeah. We're, we're not, we're not uh, what we do, right? Mm. Uh, you know, one of the exercises I remember I went through at, at some point during school is they ask you who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Cesar Cruz. Mm -hmm. No, that's your name, who you are. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm an architect. No, that's what you do, who you are. Yeah. So, so, yeah, getting rid of, of those uh, other layers yeah. Um, even even our relationships with with people, right? Yeah. Uh, I could say I'm a father, mm. and that's very important. That's a very important aspect, maybe, of who I am. Yeah. But that that doesn't define me 100. percent I was not a father eight years ago. Wow. Uh, so that's 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 a that's a responsibility. That's a blessing. That's a mission I have right now. Right. But that's also not who who I am. Wow. Right. There's a beautiful aspect about these human relationships, but but I don't think it, it defines who we are. I know that for me, going through this content and going through this series, um, and specifically this topic of identity and you know identifying the delusions that I've allowed myself to believe or to attach uh, myself to, mm -hmm. is a very um, necessary but difficult process. Um, because I think, you know, I've had to over and over again in my life realize that there's certain things I need to let go of in order to truly discover who God wants me to be. And that's hard. Uh -huh. um, I find it difficult to let go of certain things because I've attached them to my identity. Yeah. And what I don't realize and what I don't see is that by attaching those delusions to my identity, they're keeping me in a place of unhealthy discomfort. Yes. And unhealthy comfort. I think sometimes, you know, one of the words under unhealthy discomfort is trapped or forced. And I feel like, you know, 
you, you might be in a, a situation where somebody else is making you feel trapped or you feel forced by somebody else. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I do a pretty good job of doing that to myself, <laughs> of putting things in my life, of believing things in my life where I'm actually trapping myself mm -hmm. in a false sense of the identity or I'm trapped by an illusion mm -hmm. um, or de a delusion yeah. that I actually need to let go in order to actually discover my identity. Yeah. Because I, you can't actually step out into your God-given purpose mm -hmm. without discovering or starting that process of discovering who God says you are. I think when we move forward with that knowledge, then we actually have a pathway to healthy discomfort mm -hmm. and to healthy comfort. I think that's one of the tools that we can be armed with is if you have a strong and healthy sense of identity of who God says you are. Mm -hmm. You are equipped to step into healthy discomfort. You're mm -hmm. equipped to step outside of your comfort zone. Yes, yes, I, I think so. You're equipped to um, get to know Jesus better. Yes. Right? Yeah. You're equipped to start to live like him. Mm -hmm. You're equipped to help others and love others. Yeah. 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 And that's what we're about. Yeah. That's what we're here to do, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's, let's send people into their homes. But I think it would be awesome if we took a moment and identified what are the delusions that I maybe I'm attaching myself to? Or what are the delusions that I have allowed to form my identity? What defines my identity? Is it my career? Is it my relationship? You know, is it my goals? Like, what is it that defines my identity? Can I voice that? Can I recognize it? That's half of the struggle. Mm -hmm. recognizing it yeah it's very important to identify uh, those things that we believe we are yeah uh-huh yeah
Well, thanks again mm -hmm. for having this discussion, Cesar. Um, Thank you. I think that your um, faith journey, like the little bits and pieces that you've allowed us to see, you know, just in conversation and even in, you got to be at house church at your place a, a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. And you were a part of the brainstorming series and just hanging out with you and getting to know you. Your faith journey is probably one of um, the significant um, journeys that's inspiring me right now. Mm -hmm. Because I think the perspective that you bring is fresh <laughs> um, and it's, it's very well thought out. Um, it has a lot of intention and it's very real. And so I'm, ex I'm really happy that you got to be a part of this conversation that we got to hear a little bit from you. You know, I think it'd be mm -hmm. cool if we get to hear from you some more as time goes by. But I just wanted to say that and acknowledge that. I want you to know that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I appreciate I I love to have these conversations. Yeah. Uh, last conversation you and I had on this topic, mm. I was thinking actually felt like the healthy comfort. Mm, that's cool. It was uh, it was it was nice to discuss this. It, yeah. it was nice to it is nice to talk about these topics. Yeah. And yeah, personally, I'm I'm very interested, especially mm. especially in this one identity. Yeah. As it relates to our connection with God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. I'm very happy to uh, be part of New City, and and I'm always looking forward to. Get to know uh, more people, uh, more yeah. people in the church. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Till next time. Okay. Very good. <laughs> That's it. We okay. did it. Very good. <laughs>